are on a couch together for the very no. first time ever. Ever, I think. I think ever since um, our friendship started, it was always a very on-the-go kind of friendship. Yeah. It was touch and go. We would see each other out, say hi, hello. But hello. the sitting down and having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation has never happened. Has never happened. But I felt like we've had heart-to-heart -heart connections. Yes. Ever since. Absolutely. A lot of the work that we do together now is about um, recognizing what our individual healing journeys need to look like. Um, empowering other people to recognize theirs and mm -hmm. giving them the tools to, to find mm -hmm. their find their way along um, their healing journeys. And I think what comes up a lot is uh, healing the inner child. Yes. And reparenting in, the yes. inner child. Yeah. Correct. And in, in a lot of modalities, like yes. it's in a lot of belief systems, it always goes back to the child. This is extremely personal stuff, and I want to do. I want to recognize that, and I want to thank you for for sitting on this couch and being open because I just re I really feel that a lot of people will um, find power and, and hope uh, in your story. I pray and I hope, and I just want to thank you for for. And I know you're exhausted. You're only here for a few <laughs> days, but you know I really trust you with this because, like I said, ever since it felt like we we you, you understood. We understood each other, like. What is the part of uh, your childhood that you need to heal most? People know about this. Oh, she was big before. She, oh, she was a big kid. She lost weight. But um, I was big for a reason. I was diagnosed with depression and, uh, when I was in sixth grade. Childhood depression. So, um, I mean, I didn't take that to heart. Uh, they were, so obviously, the, the, the psychiatrist said that that's why I eat a lot um, but of course it's because my dad loved to eat a lot <laughs> there's truth is also in that <laughs> section I thought midnight snack was normal my mom ever since I uh, knew her or like could understand things enough had a mental illness uh, a condition um, whatever way people may want to put it. Um, at that time, she was told she was neurotic. This was the 80s. Okay. She had a temper. She, you know, could flare up. And they gave her downers. And she was misdiagnosed. And eventually, she became manic depressive. And then one, d eventually, bipolar was the last uh, term that, you know, the prognosis was that. So... As a child, I grew up with a mother who was battling this, you know, and she felt she, people could never understand her as well. People were not talking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I grew up with, uh, with a stigma that yung nanay ko baliw. Yung hindi yung, when they say, uy, baliw ako, yung, yeah. I'm fun. Yeah. No, baliw in a, something wrong with her, baliw. Like, she's something else, seeing ganyan. She, it's like, stay away from the mom. Mm -hmm. And I also, I received a lot of that energy as well. I think, it, I'm sure it was more difficult for her, but of course, it's different for a child, right? But um, by, I think I was first grade, she lost a baby. The, our, my, our youngest, the brother, he was born in 1988, November 11. And then turns out he had Down syndrome. And then things started unfolding and he had a... I think it's similar to the, uh, it's a genetic disorder that he had, but at that time it wasn't properly diagnosed yet. Mm -hmm. And so on the 17th day, she lost the baby, we lost our brother, and postpartum. Like, we talk about that now, but yeah. this is 1988. I don't think there was anyone talking about it. And, sh and around this time, her best friend was also murdered. So this was like, I was aware of this because I was in school and I saw the papers. I knew I knew that friend of hers, and I can you imagine like somebody going through all that plus everything she had gone through before. I'll say this now because this is around the time now. So my mom, part of her, what she was battling uh, was she um, she wanted life to end, you know. She just didn't want to live anymore. So as early, I don't remember what year it was. 
I would be a witness to these things. And I think I rem remember going with her because she loved to take her downers and she had access to it. So sometimes she would take a lot and we'd have to rush her to the hospital. She was suki ng medical city. And as a child, to see that, there was a lot of shame. My mom's not normal. And my father was in showbiz, mind you. Like, he wasn't exactly like the biggest star, but people knew him. They had seen him on TV at some point. It felt like it was like that with her. And she was good. And when it was good, it was good. My mom was a beautiful person. She was generous. She was compassionate. She, was, she had OCD, though. So, like, don't sit on the couch. <laughs> like, like, so, but she was a good person and obviously very beautiful, which also was something else I had to <laughs> deal with. But it was hard because it's your mom and she's trying to take her life. And she kept talking about it, that she was sick. I don't, I think the trickiest part of this is I don't want to paint a bad picture of my mom. You know, she had so much eh, in her. Sometimes, I'm sure she didn't want it. That's why actually I grew up a lot with my ninang, Naz Savellano. Um, uh, the, the, that family actually helped me because they were my sense of normalcy. Like this is a normal family. Because she knew when she would she was not she was not feeling good she would send me there sometimes weeks months bug summer but my dad was there but my dad was there but he was also a source of problem because he was also not there they didn't really see eye to eye on a lot of things they weren't aligned by third grade after that happened i remember i think that's when they finally also like talked um we have to split up and then I think that was it. And my mom moved to the States, San Francisco. Okay. Um, so she started staying there. We moved to our office, my dad and I. So I was left with my dad. My birthdays, she seemed to always have something. And around this time that I'm telling you, she went back and it was just like a whole thing. She got me back from my dad and it was like soap opera. Mm. Top rating. <laughs> What were you to your mother? Like, if, if you had to put yourself in her shoes, and, and I know that the, there, were, there were good days and there were not yeah. so good days. Um, on the good days when she looked at you, what do you think she saw? I think she saw everything she could have been. And what is that? On good days. I was her hope. That's how I felt. I was everything that she wanted to be. Like, I symbolized that. Everything that she didn't achieve for herself, my daughter will be the one to do that. On bad days, what? On bad days, I was her weapon to hurt my father. And that's that's how I felt, and I know that to be true. I'm sure, she didn't really mean it, you know. She didn't really want that. But when anger takes hold of you, yeah. there's no rhyme or reason to it. You know, this is not how I am, really. Who is this person? You know, trivia. I had so much white hair when I was in grade school until high school. Not as I actually have much less now. <laughs> the physical manifestation yeah. of everything that yeah. you that was happening inside. Yeah. Okay, so we've we've started on a journey of telling your story. Um, yeah. What comes next? What happened next? She finally got treated in the states. They gave her antidepressants. But you know, even her okay times are not so okay anymore because not happy. Eh? Not happy in the relationship, not happy with herself, her body, her life. But then there would be very low moments. She'd, okay, lock herself up in the bedroom, be taking downers. That would go on and off for days, sometimes weeks. 
And so um, we kind of knew always that at some point she's going to bounce back. If it's taking a bit longer, we call my dad. He knew how to make yeah. her happy. Like even sometimes just hug her. Yeah. Then she suddenly, soon after, she'll be okay. So we knew this to be the drill, right? This was it. But in 2001, it seemed things got a bit more serious. And, uh, well, I won't beat around the bush. It was a Saturday night. I went to Pravda. I uh, went out. Because living my best party life. I woke up in the morning because the yaya was screaming. I went down. And I saw my mother. Yeah. Yeah. Kuya was home. Um, I remember screaming, Kuya, help. Like, it's like the first thing, like, you did it! You know? But of course, you're panicking. And we brought her because we lived super close to um, St. Luke's Hospital. And so um, I remember being there in the emergency room, and then now my dad was already there. But because of how many times she had done it, and it was like she had done it, but now we're like, is it, is it done? I, I didn't realize she was actually gonna do it. Cause there was actually a point in my life I thought it was an act. I thought it was a way, I thought it was a way for her to get attention. It seemed like it was. So, you know, and then suddenly she did it. It was almost like a, Sleep now. Rest. Because I know you're tired. You know? Um, I've seen you. <laughs> she was tired. But it was almost like, why? <laughs> you know, like... There was no letter. There was nothing. And then immediately you're like, guilt comes in. It's my fault. It's your fault. It's dad's fault. It's Kuya's fault. It's my fault. You know? That's, these are the things that immediately come up. And I knew I had my faults. I had a lot. I was stealing money from her to use for my partying, you know, stuff like that. Immediately I was like, why did, why did I go out? Why did I go out? Like, immediately I thought she wanted to go to the mall. I didn't want to go to the mall with her. I didn't want to be in the mall with her. You know, sh stuff like that. Just immediately, boom, 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 boom. And then there was the shame. There's also shame of, from the Catholic Church. Her body was not allowed to be blessed in the church that she supported. Pinaglihin niya pa nga yung last brother ko sa Santo Nino doon eh. You know, these were things that were happening around that time. Whew! Wow! Am I really talking about this? Wow! Wow! I'm ready. I'm you ready. are. And you're doing great. And, and Thank you. Which leads me to my next question. Why, why after all of these years, um, have you decided to tell this story? In 2002, I became artista. And people would ask me, so your mom died, what would she die of? I would just circle my way around, like, tiptoe, like, like, yeah. like I was just, she died. I'm sorry, I'm not comfortable talking about it. And they would respect that. And that was in the beginning. And so it's just, I talked to my managers like I want to do something on mental health. Just never knew how I could do that. 
and then I, you know, we start, and I became part of She Talks. And I knew also I had a, my own healing journey. I was aware of that. And as I was going through it, together with the body love and self-love, I think the biggest trigger for me was I got married in December. My husband and I, he's here. We got married in December. Sunshine gave, Dizon gave me a bracelet. That was my mom's. And then, then Bob Nicholas and people wrote about my mom, my mom's bracelet. And then Isa lost her mom to cancer. And it's just it's triggering me. Like, I did not. I lost two stepmoms to cancer after I lost my mom. But it was just like, it didn't seem that it was fair to her. I, I feel like I speak so openly about the things that I'm going through, that how I am. But there's one part that I'm not honest about. And, but it is a very crucial part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And why I am having to go through this healing journey. Mm -hmm. And the most important part of all is, is for my mother. Perhaps somebody will find inspiration, hope meaning I don't know something from it yeah so that's why now and we have the perfect platform also for it mm -hmm. like I'm I trust you and everybody and she talks I'm in a good place I'm also about to become a mom I mean I'm not pregnant <laughs> yet and as much as my husband would like for me to suddenly <laughs> say hey baby we're have we're having a baby it's one of the reasons why I've delayed motherhood so much. Yes. Would you say that the life you're living now is a life directly influenced by what your mother wanted for both herself and for you? 100%. I got the VDR text pattern. So 50 months <laughs> Three days after we buried her. The text said, Hair shampoo commercial to be shot in Malaysia. Naku, hindi pa ako napuntang Malaysia. And then I said, Ma, is this a sign from you? What is this? And I said, God, is this from you? And then I went. And I got it. And it just felt like I was being led to that direction. I was lost, right? I was searching and I needed direction. I needed a goal. I needed a path. I guess I needed an outlet. Acting is quite great. <laughs> Isn't it therapeutic? <laughs> cut! Yeah! Cut! Tawa! Nagamit ko naman. The one thought was like, I can't end up like her. And I knew that the path I, I was on at that time, oh man. It was the path to self-destruction. And so the, the stepping off of that path, that was a gradual realization. That was a gradual recognizing of personal truth or? It was first, it was mom went this, like, and then it was like second, I don't wanna be like her. I wanna make her proud. Mm -hmm. I wanna make something of myself. And then opportunities were opening up. Yeah. So, but there were a lot of gifts sent to me along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not just talking about work and yeah. all that, but gifts, human beings, workshops that I attended, <laughs> healing, doctors, like people I talk to, you guys, she talks. How the hell are you, you? With everything that you've been through? Meron pa yan. But we'll discuss it next time. <laughs> I credit my father a lot because the the mindset, the the love for life, because mm. he was always grateful. But uh, during my rebellious years, in high school, na ngayon, there was no God. I would not pray. It not I ha did not hate God. Right. He was there, but he was just there. I didn't pray. And then my mom died. And boy, did he make me kneel. You are so shaken to the core. I couldn't, I didn't know where to go. Yeah. 
I mean, of course, I had my family, I had my friends, I had my boyfriend at that time. They were all great support systems. But I didn't know where to go, and I suddenly found myself going to church. Started believing in goodness. There was a spark of hope, and I held on to it. I didn't even know what I was holding on to. And then, Pam team came. And it felt like the hope that was tiny kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. God will keep sending gifts. Call it whatever you want. Allah, Buddha, the universe, a source. Something will be sent your way. The thing is you have to be open. And I think that was the greatest gift my dad really gave me. Then I started to believe. Believe first that good things were hap coming. Believe in myself. Also through the years as, you know, I, I, as I was getting older, I was, saw I was making some mistakes that were like, these were things, that these are patterns. Yeah. And I was making mistakes that my parents made. I made also. Karil told me uh, a very good line. She shared with me, I think we were 27 around this time, 26, 27. She's like, you know, there comes a point in our lives that wherein we have to stop blaming our past mm -hmm. for the choices that we make for ourselves today and for the future. And it was just like, whoa. Like, really? That's what I was doing. I kept blaming a lot of the mistakes that I was making to what I had done. But you know, I, and so I took full accountability. I'm like this because I have self-awareness as well. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that because of what I grew up with, I would like to A, not be a person like that, like my mom and my dad, exactly like them. I would like to be a, an improved mm -hmm. version. Yeah. yeah. So I, I wanted to keep improving myself. So it was constantly improve in acting, improve in inwards, like inside. Sayang lang hindi ko na improve ang cooking. There were a lot of things left out. And then I'll make up one day. I'll make up for it one day. You know, as the years went by, especially nearing around 30, I think that's when all these, like, the healing started to be sped up. You know, before it was just still cruising, kind of healing. Mm -hmm. But I think now as I'm getting older, I think there's also more urgency to be like, come on, get your act together. Yeah. You know what? Genetically, they say we have higher chance of getting mental illness or something, something like that, because of our genetics, as they say. I refuse believe it. I mean, I'm sure it's true, but it should not define my life. That's what textbook says. But I'm, I am myself, and a lot of it has to do with choices. Mm -hmm. I've, the choices that I've made along the way, including the most important choice, I think, is to choose a partner in life who will not only bring out the best in you, balance you, but also will be with you through that journey and will understand you. So I am very grateful to my husband. The amount of preparation that you are currently putting into reparenting your inner child, into filling the voids with positivity and hope and light, mm -hmm. into recognizing the forks in your journey and constantly choosing the trying. Path. Trying. I will, I, I'm going to say choosing because choosing. I've seen you. Yeah. Choosing, choosing the path that will continue to propel you forward and upward. Especially now, yes, at this age, yes, always, yes. The work that you're doing is some of the hardest, most uncomfortable, but most important work that any single human in this world can do. And it is an absolute honor to watch you on your journey. 
and thank you if and when the day comes that you are mom on good days and on bad days that is one heck of a lucky child I want you to know that you are surrounded by people that claim it for you on a daily basis. Thank you. <laughs> so congratulations on getting to this point. Thank you. Thank you, As Thank you for recognizing that oftentimes people wait for things to go wrong before they seek help. This sharing of her story is also my greatest gift to her. I want to let her know that I am no longer ashamed and I understand her. Especially <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> you were really something. Thank you and so are you. you are really something. I feel like this is a good place to end it and I feel like it, um, the way you told your story today the lessons that people can glean from your story, they don't have to necessarily be in the exact same position that you were or you are. Um, it may or may not even be about mental health, but I think what you offer at this point in your life and in sharing your story is hope, is the power to understand that choice ultimately is yours. 100. And that shame and guilt in themselves are neither right nor wrong. And that they themselves are nothing to feel shameful or guilty about. And that we're all in this together. And that we are. Thank you for today. Thank <laughs> you. you. Come here, girl. Uh. I love you, thank you.